All right, um, so the next uh, talk is around, um, I would say, a, a bit of introduction to, to the whole CMN stuff. I, we, we still get the feeling um, that BPMN is uh, really well adapted, well, very well known uh, out there. And CMN, some people know it, some people at least ha uh, heard of it, but there's not that much uh, usage uh, of it yet. We have Flowable, we um, truly believe in, in CMN. We put a lot of effort into the uh, engines and uh, on the modeling side as well. And we have a lot of expertise uh, uh, throughout the last couple of years for real world uh, use cases at um, small up to really large organizations uh, making use of CMN. And today, I, sp my, I would say my goal is uh, at the end of the session that at least everybody has as, um, a basic understanding of what CMN is and can do for you. And especially, it's not around CMN versus PPMN. It's not around like, um, uh, should I use CMN or should I use PPMN? It's around how do I best combine it? But let me first start a little bit um, uh, beyond the, the, um, the model itself or the, or the standard. So there's different ways of how we can actually look at, at work. There's the, on the, on the left-hand side, you see the, the ad hoc work, where there's uh, up to, almost, I would say, almost nothing they can do up front and design because everything happens at runtime. So I would, I would call that part really knowledge-driven uh, processes, right? So uh, whenever you, you have something to solve, you think, uh, what is my next uh, step or my, my body's next step that I need, uh, that I need to do? It's driven by knowledge, intuition, uh, to, solve, um, to solve a case. On, in the middle um, uh, part, we have processes. That's probably the best known um, uh, area, right? When you want to uh, organize um, uh, and design and automate um, processes in a, in a very structured way, as we already uh, have, uh, have seen uh, today. So you have clearly defined responsibilities. You, have, um, you know exactly what steps uh, your workflow is going through. And that's why you can design it up front, deploy it, and run it. On the right-hand side, um, it's, I would say, something in between. Um, on the case uh, side of things, you, you probably have partially structured um, processes. Uh, sometimes we even call them process fragments, as you probably don't have the, uh, a full end-to-end -end, um, process designed up front in, in a case. You still have the ability to do ad hoc work um, or combine it with um, some, some of the structured work. And that's what I want to focus a bit um, uh, today. We can also look at a case um, uh, in kind of like an electronic way of, of, a, of a dossier where you can store data, documents, you can, um, you can uh, add people to a case, working on a case, um, going, uh, taking it to the next level, uh, and so on. Basically, um, you can think of a case as kind of an orchestration, a place of orchestration where you can orchestrate work, you can orchestrate people, data. There's inbound, outbound, or incoming, outcoming um, data, service calls, events, that all happen um, uh, at, at, at the same time, different time, and be captured by, by the case. And we can uh, both support structured or semi-structured and even unstructured work inside of a case. That's what I want to highlight. It's not around uh, CMN versus uh, BPMN. It's just um, those two standards, they solve a similar problem in a very different way. So in BPMN, it's kind of like taking a token or more than one if you go into parallel processing. Uh, through your process model, um, it kind of flows through your designed um, uh, process structure. In CMN, it's more like a paradigm of event, something happens, uh, I have conditions, I have rules in my case, and according to the, the current um, status of my case, the, the whole context, uh, something happens, an action might be taken. One of those actions might actually be kicking off a small process fragment inside of my case. Let's say if I want to do um, um, to involve so, so somebody in, in, a, in a case or do a, a small approval, that's my next step. And how the approval happens, that's really well structured. I'm using BPMN for that. But it's orchestrated by CMN. So again, it's not like um, choosing one over the other 
uh, of course, you can still do that. I, I, would, I would say in BPMN, uh, it can really stand on its own. That, that's fine. There are processes that are really well structured. You don't even have that much um, ad hoc work, if at all. Uh, but I would say not the other way around. I would never use CMN on its own. Because then you will end up, uh, I also will have an example how you can kind of misuse CMN. Uh, you shouldn't do that. I think the best way is to use them in a clever way, um, both together. Now, the next uh, thing I want to do is run through a couple of really small uh, and easy examples to showcase a little bit of the differences uh, where, uh, CMN versus um, uh, BPMN. So in this example, uh, that's one of the um, that we use in Flowable Engage, uh, our, one of our um, enterprise products for to handle um, user accounts or, or, or client, uh, kind of like a, a small client lifecycle. You can see here that whenever I start this case and it's mapped to, to, um, uh, to, to, my, to, my, uh, to my client, I initialize the case and that's actually, as you can see here in the symbol, it, it, this part is very, very well structured as a BPMN process. Then we go into active stage. So CMN kind of like when you look at, a, at your end-to-end -end process from top down, you divide your work into phases, or CMN calls them stages. So you see the active stage and the inactive stage, which means uh, it represents my current state of my, of my client. Am I in an active relationship or in an inactive one? And then you go, uh, go inside of a stage and say, what can I do? Uh, while my client relationship is act active, I can add user accounts, I can deactivate the user, or I, when I deactivate the user, as you can see, the, um, the black, uh, black element, diamond there, it actually exits or terminates the active state and switches to the inactive one. And then I can reactivate and go back. So this is just um, one really small example of how a end-to-end -end, um, lifecycle case can be expressed in CMN. If I would go and say, how would I do that in BPMN? So there are several ways on, on how you can do that. And maybe before I go there, you also see a couple of small um, icons like the play button or the play icon at the add user account that actually means manual activation. It says, I'm, uh, I'm still in control. That's not automatically started. While I'm in active stage, I can optionally say, I want to add a new user account. That's a manual action. And it's repetitive. I can add as many as I want. Whereas the deactivate user also has manual activation, right? I want to do that on a manual activation or manually trigger that. But it can only be done once because once I do it, I basically leave the active stage and go into an active stage. Now, this is uh, uh, one way of how I could express more or less uh, the same semantics in uh, BPMN. I used um, ad hoc sub-processes uh, sub for that, but you also have some uh, possibilities to express optional work or manually um, triggered work uh, as, as a um, um, uh, uh, ad hoc sub-process, right? That's where you see the um, active or the inactive um, sub-process. But it's um, way less expressive from a graphical point of view. You don't see the, 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 um, the, the direct semantics between that. The deletion of the user account, I modeled it as um, an event subprocess that actually cancels the whole thing. If I really would want to have the very same semantics like I have in CMN, that's what I would have. Uh, so I would actually ha uh, need a lot of different ways of expressing all the, the possibilities that I have at the same time, because I can choose between adding a user account or even more than one at the same time, and still be able to cancel the whole thing, which needs to uh, terminate uh, things. So I need to work a lot with uh, signals and boundary events uh, to express that. And of course, it's not at all expressive, right? If you compare, let me go back here, I have a visual representation what happens in or can happen in active state or can happen in inactive state that's really expressive. And um, here, I'm a bit lost, right? But we can also look at it um, from the other way around. So this is a really small example in BPMN, right? Really clear 
I have my flow from task A to B, then I go into a decision, uh, exclusive gateway, and I either uh, take the route through task C or task D. That's it. I can also do that in CMN because we have, C, um, we have kind of something similar in uh, CMN as well. So I have task A. When it completes, it triggers the entry sentry on task B, so activates task B. But it's way less expressive. I could not see if task C or D is actually exclusive or parallel. I can't see that. Actually, I, I, I would have to, to uh, really low level add um, conditions uh, in there to express whether they can uh, only be exclusive or uh, they can even run in parallel. So in, in other words, it's, uh, you can also kind of misuse CMN uh, for BPMN-like or workflow-like uh, structure process semantics and the other way around. So what I want to, to showcase here is a bit um, how we are using CMN um, to basically orchestrate um, your end-to-end -end, um, digitalized process. So we use CMN as a container to orchestrate smaller process fragments. It has uh, another really nice um, side effect, positive side effect, that your process uh, models become a bit smaller because they're going to be orchestrated by the overall CMN model. That makes it way more um, expressive on one end, so you, can, it's a, you have a better understanding. And for the long run, for process migrations, for, um, I mean, a process is something that lives, right? You, you're going to make a lot of changes throughout the life cycle of, of, a, of a process model. And that's easier if you have smaller chunks to, to, um, to extend, to work with, than if you have really huge um, overall process models. As we will see a bit uh, later um, in one of today's talks as well, uh, we also make heavy use of events. Uh, and CMN is a really great way to, to use events because you can throw events uh, to a case and according to stage, to the, the, the current um, state of the case, all the, the contextual data you have in a case, you can kick off um, um, process fragments, you can start a task, you can in invite uh, somebody to, to your case to work on, on the case. Um, that's, that's a really nice um, combination. And of course, like in the process as well, you can pull data into a case, you can also um, invoke services, that's the same thing like in BPMN as well. And um, it's also a great place to store documents, right? Not, not just data, structured data, unstructured data, but also um, uh, documents itself. And of course, uh, you can uh, trigger services, you can um, uh, involve people working on a case, even in parallel. Um, that's also a great way to separate um, executions or scope executions so that um, different people can work on the same time inside of the, of, of, uh, the same case without um, uh, killing each other. And maybe that's uh, a slide you will probably will see later on as well. Um, I think they, those three standards, CMN, BPN, and DMN, they really work great together. Although they're, uh, they have their own kind of um, uh, semantics or how they live, but um, I, I think best is uh, to, to really use them all together. So in CMN, as you can see, you can actually um, add a process task to say, at this part of my, of my case, I want to run something very structured, very, very, very straightforward, and that's best expressed in BPMN. Or you can do this, the, the opposite, like in a BPMN task, you can say, this part uh, I want to express as a case because it's, it's less structured, I have a lot of um, uh, manual work in there or ad hoc work, but I want to solve uh, or uh, solve an, uh, a purpose, and, and it's best expressed in CMN. And of course, both of them can, uh, can use DMN as a decision um, task uh, at any time when you want to, to run a decision table. Now, what I want to do um, as, as a next step is uh, run you through, um, through a, a demo to give you a bit more flavor of how that looks like in, in, uh, in Flowable. So what I'm actually using, and I'm showing you the, um, 
the appropriate mo uh, the, the, the model side of things as well. Uh, how can I make use of CMMN as my case container, as my orchestration container, to um, listen to events? So that's one of the main area of, of, uh, of the demo. Uh, I have a lot of events coming from different sources, all be uh, thrown to the case to see how we can react uh, in different situations. Uh, different, um, we can have events from data sources, uh, we can have events from um, uh, messages, that's actually one of the um, sources that I'm going to use. And we can orchestrate processes because we want to react on those events uh, depending on the, on the current state we have uh, in the case. And we can also do the opposite, we can expose interactions uh, from the case to, to, uh, to a case worker, to a user. Um, could be over chat channel, over email, or even um, in a regular user task, or in, in the case UI that we have uh, in Flowable Work. And at the end of the day, if, if uh, from one of the pro the, those processes I create a document, of course I want to save it inside of the case to keep all my, um, uh, my data at, at one place. So when I'm looking into a case, I can see the past work, I can see uh, 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 an audit stream, what happened uh, so far in the case, uh, who was working on, on uh, what piece of the case, I can see documents, I can see basically all, uh, all the data uh, in, in, uh, in one part. And that's what I'm going to use. So I'm, I'm using a case kind of like the center of it all, right? Um, it uses CMN uh, to, to express the, the different stages and uh, uh, availability of uh, event listeners and process fragments. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to use uh, an AI-driven chatbot that actually uh, listens to uh, users' input and talking to the case. And, um, and then once we recognize what we call intentions, so there's, uh, you can think of uh, an AI chatbot running behind the scenes and augmenting all the chat, all the messages. And of course it needs training, so we use Google TensorFlow for that. And you can train uh, that chatbot to listen or to, to um, augment the conversation and listen to uh, intents. So what is the intent of, of my current user when, when he talks to me? What does he want to do? We then uh, don't drive the whole conversation through that um, um, AI-driven uh, framework. That's the whole um, smart part. We just use, as soon as we grabbed one of those intents, we throw them at, uh, through the event bus to the case and let CMN take, take care of it and see whether the current context of my conversation is able to handle that intent. And if so, we kick off a process inside of the case to handle that intent and drive the conversation over instant messaging. At the same time, we can also have user interactions. I can see, I can uh, 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 start a process directly in the case um, as a user. I don't need chat for that. I can, I can make use of the task UI. I can make use of the case UI. Uh, or I could even use the APIs to, to, uh, to, to start a process inside of the case or to trigger an event or to send a signal, uh, something like that. All right. So what we want to, to look at first is how does the, the case model look like behind the scenes. So what we have is probably starting off here. In uh, Flowable Design, we have a CMN model. Think of that case or um, CMN case um, as the, the case or the CMN based case container behind an instant messaging chat. So you have a chat, uh, and then when, when we um, detect an intent, we throw it back to the case as a signal, as an event, and then depending on where, where I am in my case, I can handle it. And I can even do um, uh, really complex situations. So in my, uh, in my example here, which is coming from the banking world, um, I have to distinguish between use cases running in private banking or institutional banking. They are somehow related, but not the same thing. 
I, as uh, uh, um, myself, as an individual, I'm talking to a bank, right? But I might be involved because my company has an account at, that, at the same bank. Or me, as a private person, I use private banking. But I'm the same person. I want to talk uh, over the same channel. And I have to detect, is this guy now talking uh, in the context of his business or as a private person? And that's what we can make use of uh, subcases in CMN. So here, for instance, we have the, the private banking part. And in the private banking part, we, we, we have a couple of um, intents we can handle, like uh, robot advisory, digital assets uh, I want to, to be able to handle, like moving my, my um, digital currency to, to the bank. It's actually something we really did for, for uh, uh, crypto-based um, uh, banks. And I can also, of course, change my address because I, I moved to a new location or something like that. But I can only do that as soon as, I, or as, as I'm still having an active uh, relationship with the bank. As soon as I'm uh, on board, uh, off-boarded, I will go into off-boarding mode. And of course, I cannot handle any, any of those use cases anymore. So in CMN, this is really easy to, to, to model um, uh, this kind of life cycle situations and what can I do? If I then go into, let's say, uh, before I can do any of uh, digital asset management, I need to answer a couple of questions, going into a KYC, know your customer type of process. Uh, then I can do, um, uh, that's best expressed in BPMN. And I can use the form engine to, to declaratively say, um, what are the questions that I need to run through, uh, and so on. So at the end of the day, we have um, um, those cases that are listening to, to, to events. We have the AI-driven chatbot that uh, gets those intents from messages and throws them as events to the case. And if they get picked up, they, they kick off a BPMN process to run the conversation. Now, if I go to the runtime, I have a conversation with one of my clients. So currently here I logged in as Shane Bowen. I'm a client advisor uh, inside of the bank and I'm connected to a couple of my clients. But I'm not always around and all those kind of um, requests, more like self-service type of processes, like change my address for instance, I would like to, uh, that they could be handled fully autonomous uh, without me having an interaction uh, with my client. Here on this, on this window, I'm logged in as Annie Austin. She's representing the client. So you can think of this uh, UI. Uh, we have um, clients integrated that, uh, integrating um, this UI directly in, in e-banking or mobile banking um, uh, by, uh, by using the embedded um, UI parts that Flowable um, can provide. Now, I did not yet start the case, right? So this is a regular uh, chat, this is a regular conversation. It just uh, has the AI part running behind the scenes. So I can say, hey, hi, and this is kind of like um, trained smart, smart uh, chit chat. Maybe this might work as well. That's still fully driven by AI. But if I do something else like, Set up a something like this. As you can see, this is the intent was fetched, like something around um, robot advisor. Want to set up a portfolio, but there's no case running behind the conversation yet. We're going to start that right away, so it cannot be handled. And the only thing the chatbot can do then, because it cannot handle that intent, is handing me over to a desk agent. But I don't want to do that right now, so I say no thanks. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, the case, and we select any Austin. So I'm starting that case that I just shown uh, in global design, and we attach it to, the, to this um, chat, to this conversation. So basically, uh, making, um, making it available to, to handle those events. 
And because I have different um, subcases that handle uh, uh, some of the intents, I can say which ones I want to make active, depending on the, on the client, right? Maybe it's just a private uh, a banking client, then I only start private banking. Or maybe I also start uh, institutional banking. So we, should, we can also oversee the conversation directly inside of my case. So that's now all connected. I connected the conversation into my case, and now I'm listening to events that might uh, be uh, created by the AI chatbot. So go back here. If I do the more or less very same thing. Oh, what about now? We now see, because we started the case, now listening to this specific intent of onboarding um, or advisory portfolio, now we can handle that intent because we have the case kicking off, or listening to that event and kicking off a BPMM process inside of the case. And now I can see, of course, I want to get onboarded. And now um, the AI-driven chatbot is now silent and the process-driven chatbot took over. But of course, as a user, I don't, I don't feel the difference. It's just a digital assistant walking me uh, through um, a couple of questions. So I can say, OK, a, bit, a little bit of risk is OK. In, in, in KYC, know your customer, it's all around profiling, right? It's around getting to know the habits of your, of your client, is he uh, in a situation that he can handle risk or uh, would he lose money and would this be substan uh, substantial for him? So that's what we try to figure out. So that's fine. I'm just answering those, those questions. I could say I have a bit of, uh, of money. And then what we uh, do uh, behind the scenes, uh, we can, uh, although um, driven inside of an unstructured um, ch uh, channel like instant messaging, we can still grab all that structured information and even put it into, into a, a document. So I was using the Flowable um, template engine to create a document um, out of um, that I merged some of the case data uh, into, um, into the document, into the template. All right. Now, I am um, onboarded uh, for uh, digital asset management, and, and then I, I, uh, I can move on. I could also say, um, can you help me? Something like this. Then we have a really um, great way of, of the full power of uh, processing case management. We can uh, pull in data from a third-party system. Maybe I'm connected to a C um, CRM system to, to load the current address of my client because the cool thing is, inside of the case, I have all that information, right? I know the ID of my, my um, user that is chatting to me, and that's how I can um, get, uh, get the current address, let's say. Let's say yes. Let's move to an interesting place. Now, as you might guess, if we um, do an address change cross-border, I'm moving from Germany to Russia. Uh, in the banking world, this is not that easy to handle. So we need to, uh, before we just change a couple of data sets in my CRM system, we have to go through a lot of compliance stuff to see, are we even um, serving as a bank? Are we even serving Russia? Is it a, um, a country we can serve? And, and if yes, um, what type of um, profile is my client? Uh, does she have a portfolio which would not be compliant when moving to Russia? All those questions, which is a bit more uh, complex than just uh, changing an address, right? What we also can do uh, here we can also blend in third-party content. I now uh, added some um, Google Maps stuff into my conversation uh, to, to show that, that you can also uh, blend in third-party content into a uh, running instant messaging channel. And the interesting part is actually now, I 
entered all my data as a client. I cannot do uh, more at the, at the minute, but if we um, log in as a compliance officer now, so I'm going to log in, oops, log in as Tim Lee. And if I go in my task inbox, I see that I have to review this case. And of course, by the way, I could, um, I could also look into the, into the, the history and see where, where I am in my, in my, in my process. Can always do that. We're currently running at the review history um, part here. Um, that's always possible. But at the end of the day, I, I, I need to um, review uh, review the, the, all the data that I that I gathered so far. I see the old address, new address. I see a couple of uh, numbers crunched from the, the core banking system. This is a regular user task in a regular process, you probably uh, all know. So that's how CMN can, uh, can actually um, play a part of orchestrating um, uh, something really dynamic like intense throwing in by an AI chatbot, at the same time handling very well structured tasks, pulling in data, calling services, and orchestrate all of that um, uh, in a contextual way, all handled by uh, CMN. So when I'm going to accept the move, uh, please pay attention at the bottom line here. So if I move, I say uh, accept, then you see in, in real time messages sent back uh, like a confirmation. And of course that depends on the channel that I started the whole conversation. If I would have sent an email like, hey, I changed my address, I would of course get my feedback back on the same channel in email. But if I contact it in, in some messaging, I want to get the answer back on the same channel. Okay, now let's move this up a bit and go yet to another channel. Let me see, yeah. Now imagine, I, I even want to run, um, uh, I want to make use of the case in an environment or on a channel like WhatsApp. Now WhatsApp is, uh, I cannot uh, fully control the end-to-end -end, um, um, communication channel, right? That's done by Facebook, but I want to be able to grab those messages, fire them into, um, uh, into Flowable, the same way as we treat our own uh, messaging client and, and provide the same, um, uh, the same information, the same possibilities over that channel as well. What I'm going to show here is something out of banking. Um, might be uh, that, I, that I just, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on, on online, I was figuring out a new car, I was um, Getting across the Porsche um, website, I, I'm uh, a big fan of the Taycan, I just did a configuration, but now what, right? How can I continue with that? So imagine this QR code, which in, uh, has an encoded um, uh, um, Porsche production uh, or configuration code. When I save a configuration in the car configurator, there's an ID. I encoded it into my QR code, and if I take just my camera on my smartphone, it's actually a link. It directly opens up in, in um, WhatsApp. And I can post um, the message there. And what you can see now is here in Flowable, I can also oversee the whole conversation. Um, but it's driven the same way by, by my case, by handling this um, uh, car configuration uh, code. And it can, I can even have inter, uh, interactively uh, uh, on, on that same channel, I can send uh, an image like, okay, that, that's uh, the configuration that you just chose. Do you want to continue? And I can say yes, for instance. And of course, in, in, um, in WhatsApp, I don't have uh, buttons, right? I only have text. I don't have forms. I only have buttons. And the, the global um, 
process uh, bot is even smart enough to know that I'm now running on, on the WhatsApp channel. That's why uh, uh, it, it uses then textual input to, to map to my, um, uh, back to my process. And we will see that later when we fill out the form, how that actually works. I can even use my camera. I should now upload my driving license. I'm not going to do that uh, live, but I'm going to use um, the, not that one, the camera. Imagine that I would now um, take a copy of my driver license. Then I can directly upload it. And then it's, uh, it's even, um, it is scanned or it's delivered as a scan, as an image of my driving license. And it's stored inside of the case, even though I'm using WhatsApp, right? Because uh, rem uh, remember, everything happens inside of that CMN driven case. And I can continue um, the conversation. Okay, I have the driving license. Do you need leasing? I can say, maybe. So let's see. And then I have to fill out the form. But again, on this channel, I cannot post a form. So I need uh, a different way of, of getting data in. And what the, the, the process chatbot actually does, it asks me questions. It uses the very same form definition in global design. I can show that later. And just um, asks me questions, fill in the data behind the scenes, and as soon as all the data is there, completes the tasks for me. So I can say, okay, I, need, I want 48 months. Probably have 20K. Okay. And then I, I see, just as a small feedback, all the, the um, collected information um, that, that is now stored inside of the case um, uh, as, as the chatbot was walking me through, through, um, through that process. So as you can see, this can even go as far as using um, a channel like WhatsApp um, to, at the end of the day, drive stuff inside of, uh, of, of the case. All right. So let me go back here into design. I just want to, um, to wrap up uh, with the, again, the, the, the main topic around uh, how you can leverage CMN uh, in a good way to orchestrate um, process or smaller process, process fragments, uh, sub-processes, so to speak, and combine it with, uh, in a contextual way, how you can use stages to say um, in which context I am in my end-to-end -end life cycle, and even use um, dynamic stuff like events to be thrown into the case and to be picked up by listeners, uh, if available, and to kick off um, processes, to, to start uh, tasks, um, involve people, uh, invoke services, um, uh, and so on. So I hope I could get across that it is not uh, CMN versus BPM, choose one or the other, but how you, you smartly combine the two standards in a good way to, to um, to orchestrate or, and, and to, to react in a dynamic way to, to your um, requirements on an end-to-end -end, um, process, which we all know, as soon as people get, get involved, it's not always a straight line, right? There's always a lot of um, things happening and specifics uh, that I need to handle at that case or at that, uh, at that, at that part of my end-to-end -end process that I probably didn't foresee. All right, are there any questions? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, many thanks for your very interesting talk. Um, I have one question. You showed uh, at the beginning um, how BPMN and CMN um, correlates and how complicated it can be that you want to express a case in BPMN. On the other hand, what is your experience um, or, uh, from customer feedback um, about the, um, how understandable or readable is CMN? Because my experience is that you have really some problems if you have the picture, the model, to, to go into deep what is really meant by that. Because, for example, sentries 
you, you do not see what is the meaning of a century, for example. Totally agree. So um, <clears throat> when we look at the uh, bo both uh, standards, PPMN, I would say from a business perspective, when I look at the process model, it's, very, uh, it's way more expressive than if, if I have, let's say, a very complex CMN model. I totally agree on that one. And uh, we're already um, uh, having a, a couple of talks with the OMG on, on, uh, on the people from the OMG on how we can add more expressive way, ways into CMN as well. However, I still feel like um, when you look at a real world uh, CMN um, model, that at least from, from a top, top perspective, you can still see maybe not all the details like the conditions on an exit or, or entry entry. Maybe you don't see that. Yes, I agree. But you still see what can happen in my stages and um, um, in, in a kind of an uh, overview uh, point of view. So we, we still have the experience from, from clients that they actually see added value in having a CMN model, but uh, just at a certain extent. The, here in front, there's another question. Hello. I have uh, two questions. The first question uh, about uh, how uh, the form uh, is, uh, uh, is translated into the chat, the messages, like the, how it's generated that the a standard form can be in the chat context. It can be designed one time, and then can yeah. we see that in depth? And the other thing, um, for the messages uh, generated by the digital assistant, like when you are uh, changing an address, uh, thank you for changing, uh, how, is it like, uh, 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 like AI generated or it is up to the process designer to generate it? Okay, so maybe, still have a couple of minutes. Three. <laughs> Let me show that um, last uh, process I was showing on, on uh, WhatsApp. Um, so for instance, let me go here. That was the form. Um, no, sorry, that was just a confirmation. There we are. I think it's this guy. That was the form uh, designed um, to get the, 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 the leasing details. And on the process level, and the, when you say you want to send back um, uh, a text, that's what you can do here. For instance, just uh, you can use the template engine. Uh, then you can even have it in different languages. And then we know that chatbot actually answers you in English or, or German or whatever. Or you can just, in my simple example, I was just using um, and posting the, the message that I want to send. Uh, just as a regular service task, basically. Like, is it, uh, is it alert for the process designer to write and handle all of these messages? No, no uh, I, I would say in a real world example, uh, we, we, um, we take that apart, we, take, we have the process and then we have a repository of all the content handled in different languages. So that's uh, the template engine that we have in uh, Flowable as well where you have um, business people actually writing uh, the, the content, right? But they can use dynamic stuff like expressions to, to include name or, you know, but, 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 but data. Also yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're still trying to automate, you know, humans, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, hey. Uh, I also have a question, so is there a chance to get hands-on? It was a very, very nice demo, thank you. And um, I'm just wondering if there's some kind of Docker container available or it is. example repo, because it would be nice to a little bit find out, okay, how much effort is it to yeah, design something like that? You can actually go to flowable.com slash trial and you can register and then you can download a uh, um, fully fledged uh, flowable um, engage stack where, where even the, the messaging, that's all included. 
Um, I think there's even a small step-by-step -step tutorial that takes you through how you can design such a process or case model. You can then uh, use design, deploy it to runtime, uh, run it. So the trial might be a good start. Okay, cool, thank you. So it means like this uh, agent front end is a product you sell, basically. Sorry? This, this agent front end you showed for this chat, yep. so to say, this is real product you sell. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.